Perhaps the most common misconception is that selected candidates are scrawny, small, and weak. And while that may be the picture you see in movies, and it feels good to root for the underdog, the truth is, the average selected candidate historically is 5'10 and 180 pounds. And that means half of those selected were bigger and taller than that, and the other half were smaller and lighter. Deciding how big and lean you should be depends on three factors, including your current level of fitness, your timeline to go to selection, and your current level of muscle mass. But before going step by step how to determine where you'll perform best, it's worth understanding why size and body fat percentage are so important. Candidates at SFAS with the most lean mass and lowest body fat percentage had 6 and 7 times higher odds of being selected than those with the least lean mass and highest body fat percentage. And that same research also analyzed 8 other predictors of selection success, and unsurprisingly, lean mass and body fat percentage top that list. But even though lean mass is important, I don't recommend everybody put on muscle. And I'll explain why in a minute, but there is one recommendation I will make to every person training for selection, and that is to find your high performance body fat percentage. If you're 20% or higher, losing several pounds of body fat is guaranteed to make you run and work faster. But body fat is a double-edged sword. At both high and very low levels, you will feel slow and lethargic. You need to find a healthy range where you can perform at a high level without experiencing hunger, low energy, or other deleterious effects. Since side effects of low body fat kick in at different levels based on the person, I recommend you work your way down to 15% and see how you feel. Once you do reach that healthy, lean range, you can express your fitness to its fullest potential. No longer will you have 10 or even 25 pounds of fat weighing you down on your 5 mile run, so you'll be the fastest you've ever been. But before you up the calories and hit the gym, you need to do an honest assessment of your cardiovascular fitness, which to keep simple for this video, I'll break down into three categories. Category 1 is exceeding the standards. If you're running fast, faster than a 38 minute 5 mile and comfortably rocking a 14 minute mile pace or faster then you'd be in this category. Category 2 is your at the standards, a 39 minute 5 mile or rocking just below a 15 minute mile pace. And category 3 is below the standards. If you are below the endurance standards and you're lean then I will rarely if ever recommend bulking. But it does begin to get more complex when we consider the other factors. The first of the next two being your timeline to go to selection. Are you 3 or fewer months out, 4 to 6 months out, or 7 7 plus months out. Where you are in your journey to selection is critical to informing how you prepare. The other aspect of body composition you need to consider is your fat-free mass index, which is basically BMI, but accounts for muscle mass and is standardized for height. Generally speaking, I like for my athletes to have an FFMI of 21 or higher, which means you have more muscle mass than the average person, but that's not always possible given timeline constraints. To help simplify your next steps, I've created this matrix to determine whether you should gain or maintain muscle based on your cardiovascular fitness, your timeline to selection, and FFMI. You can access this matrix and FFMI calculator in the description. But what if there were no timeline constraints, you had unlimited resources, recovery, and the ability to train? Still, 15% body fat and 21 plus FFMI are good guidelines. The reason why I chose those numbers is for two reasons that serve the ultimate goal of getting selected and having improved performance. The first is that low body fat percentage will allow you to run and rock faster, and second, Second, high levels of lean muscle mass is a signal of strength, and having that muscle mass will make your logs, carries, and rocks far easier than if you were smaller and weaker. Believe it or not, a quarter of all candidates who showed up to selection were at 25% or more body fat. Assuming they were of average build, those guys were carrying upwards of 20 additional pounds of fat mass. It's no surprise that only 13% of them were selected. The point is, body composition is one of the most powerful levers you can pull to optimize your performance, and is fully within your control. But I know there is still going to be those of you who reject the statistics entirely and explain how your cross-country running marine friend was selected at 140 pounds. And then there's going to be the guy who asks whether he should wait to gain one more pound of muscle to hit an FFMI of 21 before shipping. Both of these are missing the point. This channel exists to maximize your chances of success. And if you want to be successful, it's true. No amount of research or education will replace good old-fashioned hard work. But at the same time, if you're spending eight hours training per week, you want to make sure you focus on what matters most. Once you're prepared, don't hesitate. Sign your contract and train, eat, and sleep every day in a manner that you know you did everything in your power to prepare. To make it crystal clear, here are your action items. 
create a roadmap, and then achieve around 15% body fat. Then, assess your cardiovascular fitness, plan a timeline to enlist and go to selection, determine your FFMI, and then use the matrix in the description to determine your next steps. And all of this assumes you're already on a regimented training program. To learn the smartest way to train for selection, click the video on the screen.